You're listening to the DolphinsTalk.com Podcast Network. Dolphin fans, hello to the people. It is I, Aaron the Brain, and welcome to another episode of the same old Dolphin show, proudly part of the DolphinsTalk.com podcast network and proudly sponsored by BetUS and our good friends at Manscaped. It is Thursday. It is 9 p.m. for those of you who aren't watching live on YouTube. For those of you who are watching live on YouTube, what's up, YouTube? How you guys doing tonight? Obviously, uh, it is another solo show. Josh uh, still not fully recovered, uh, but uh, good news is uh, we we did talk about this. We are monitoring it on a daily basis, and uh, the good news is we are not going to have to put Josh on IR. He's not pulling. Uh, uh, a Will Fuller. Uh, he's not, uh, you know, forcing himself onto IR. He, he should be back sooner rather than later. Uh, he's not going to miss three full shows or three weeks, however you want to look at it. Uh, hoping, we're hoping that he'll be back for the reaction show. And hopefully for a change, uh, the reaction show will have some positivity to it uh, as the Dolphins are going across the pond uh, to take on the Jacksonville Jaguars in hopes that getting off the continent will somehow change their luck. Uh, the What will likely be uh, better for their luck is playing a team uh, in Jacksonville that has lost 20 games in a row. So if you find a way to lose this one, uh, you might be the worst team in the league. If you find a way to be the team that Jacksonville breaks their 20-game losing streak against. It is the second longest losing streak in National Football League history. So, look, you got to turn it around some, at some point. Look, the, t- the team can't be this bad, can it? Maybe it is. If if you lose this week, like, you, you can't wait any longer. You just, somebody's got to get fired. Uh, and it, it's not like, you know, it's not like bloodlust and we just got to see somebody get fired. But like, seriously, if you if you lose this game, if Jacksonville wins their first game in 21 tries against you uh, in London against, a, you know, in a crowd that's mostly going to be Dolphins fans. I mean, there's just there's no excuse anymore. Tua is going to play. It looks like he's back at practice. They haven't officially said it yet. But it looks like uh, all signs point to Tua playing. Of course, uh, now you've got Devontae Parker still not practicing. X now isn't practicing. Preston Williams is on the injury report. So there are some things to be a little bit leery of. On the other side of things, Jacksonville, you know, they've got got a few injuries of their own. Miles Jack doesn't look like he's going to play. Uh, they got some some offensive linemen that are banged up, but they probably are going to play. Uh, Marvin Jones has this personal issue that he's dealing with, so he hasn't practiced the last two days. Uh, no word yet on whether or not he's going to be there. Uh, but the bottom line is, this is a game you've got to win. I, at this point, I don't know that there that it matters as far as you know for the playoffs. Playoffs, yeah. I I, I just hope we can win a game. Uh, I because I don't think this is a playoff team, regardless. But if if there is a silver lining, it's that you've got to a back, and this is the start of the stretch that is supposed to be soft. Now, the problem is is. You expected the Dolphins to look a lot better than what they've looked so far. And so 
everybody else is looking at the Dolphins as, you know, it's easy for us to say as Dolphins fans, hey, you're playing Jacksonville, that's a win. You're playing Atlanta, that's a win. You're playing the Jets, that's a win. But the truth of the matter is those teams are looking at Miami the same way. They're looking at the Dolphins. The Jaguars are looking at the Dolphins and saying, we've lost 20 games in a row, but we're playing the Dolphins this week. This is our opportunity to get it right. So which of these franchises is going to get it right uh, in this game? Uh, we'll, we'll get into it and we'll, we'll break it down a little bit, but before we do, just a reminder again, that we are sponsored by bet us. So bet with the three decade leader bet us join now for 125% bonus or a 200% bonus. If you use your crypto. So if you use your, whether it's your Dogecoin or your Bitcoin or your Ethereum, I don't really know much about these Bitcoins. I'm trying to educate myself a little bit and talk to people who are in the know. Every time it's just right over my head. I don't know, but it seems to be the wave of the future. It, it seems like it has been the wave of the future for about two years, so maybe I'm just getting old. But use the promo code Dolphin, uh, Dolphins Talk. Of course, that's the promo code Dolphins Talk. And bet sports. Casino, horses, NBA preseason, college football, NFL. Put a big bet on the Miami Dolphins if you think that this is the week that we're finally going to turn it around. Hell, you could even bet on pop culture. Do they have any bets on the on the Bravo Housewives about what's going to happen in uh, you know part two of the 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 Bravo Real Housewives of Beverly Hills reunion? I might get I might get in on a little bit of that action. Uh, but you can bet pop culture and more at betus.com. You bet, you win, you get paid. That is BetUS. So going to break down this game just a little bit. What do the Dolphins have to do? We'll start on the offensive side of the ball since that's where a lot of the talk is this, this week with Tua making his return to the offense. Obviously, Jacoby Brissett a little bit banged up, so he's limited. So it, it, it just bodes... It just points even more in the direction that it's going to be Tua back at the helm, uh, and we're going to get to see what this offense looks like, except, of course, you're going to be without Will Fuller. You might be without Devontae Parker. You might be without Preston Williams. So what does that mean for the Dolphins' offense? Well, it means Jalen Waddell. It means, hang on a second, I'm bad at this, but it means... Waddle, waddle. That's right. It means that Jalen Waddle should be the focus of the Miami Dolphins offense this Sunday. Uh, but it also means that, look, the, the Dolphins, it doesn't matter that Miles Gaskin isn't great at blocking and pass protection. First off, he was good at it last year. He was bad at it at the early portion of this year. But the fact of the matter is the offensive line sucks. Savan Ahmed isn't good at blocking. Malcolm Brown isn't great at, at blocking. So you might as well have the guy that has been for the last year and a half now, or the last, you know, I guess 15 games that he's played in, which is over the, the, the course of the team's last 21 games, the team's best playmaker is Miles Gaskin. So whether it's running the ball, which I do think we need to do more of, I think there needs to be some semblance of balance. The Jaguars do have a pretty good run defense, but you know Tampa Bay had the best run defense in the league, and I think there were still you know creases there, and there were it's it's not like the Dolphins were completely inept running the football against Tampa. They just picked their spots and they did it very you know in a very limited basis. They, they, they didn't run the ball very much. And then obviously when they got behind by two scores in the fourth quarter, you basically had to abandon it entirely, but that should not be the case in this one. Fingers crossed. Uh, they, they should not get boat raced by the, by the Jacksonville Jaguars or everybody should lose their job. They should just fire everybody and, you know, let, I don't even know who would coach. I guess Josh Boyer would co uh, Josh Boyer should get fired too. I, I don't know. They'll, they'll fire somebody. They'll find somebody to, to call the plays and be the head coach. Maybe Tua can be the player coach. Hey, you, what difference does it make? If you can't beat the Jaguars, it doesn't really matter what you do. You might as well tank the rest of the season. Only problem with that is, of course, that we don't have our own first-round pick. But anyway, I digress. Uh, I do think you're going to see a lot of Jalen Waddell in this game, but also Mike Gesicki. 
Miles Gaskin, and you're going to see other receivers have to step up. So Albert Wilson, I, I don't know what's going on with Albert Wilson. Like, I thought he was going to get cut. He, then he had, like, he supposedly he was great in training camp, had this great training camp, but we didn't really see. Then he got hurt, and we didn't really see him much in the preseason at all. And the little bit we've seen of him so far this season, it's him dropping passes left and right. So I, I, I don't know how much we can really expect from Albert Wilson, but we're going to need somebody to step up. So maybe it's Albert Wilson. Maybe it's Mac Hollins, the guy who, I mean, look, there's nothing great about him, but he – he just seems to produce. He just he, he doesn't get open by a ton, but you throw him the ball, you put it in his vicinity, he makes plays, or at the very least, he draws a pass interference. So uh, maybe it's maybe the answer is you see more Mac Hollins. Maybe Hunter Long can actually get on the field since we we thought high, so highly of him enough to to use a third round pick on him uh, to be our fifth tight end and he can't even get on the field. Maybe this is the week that Hunter Long breaks through and gets some playing time. I don't know. I'm not holding my breath on it. But at the end of the day, what this team does need to do is they need to get some rhythm on offense. Tua needs to look good because at the end of the day. That's what this season is all about. It's what it's always been about. And even more so now that the team is one and four, it is not about the record. It is not about whether or not they make the playoffs. It is about finding out what you have under center is to a Tunga Vailoa, the franchise quarterback for the Miami Dolphins going forward after 2021, because they're going to have some options after this season. And uh, I mean, you're going to have your people that are just going to keep banging the table for Deshaun Watson. You're going to have your people that are going to be banging the table for Aaron Rodgers. And then you're going to have your people that are going to be banging the table that we should be drafting another quarterback. Uh, the, the fact of the matter is the only way that you're not banging the table for those options is if Tua takes this job by the reins and just dominates. And so this is an opportunity for him to do that against a Jacksonville defense that while it is pretty good against the run has been subpar against the pass. Uh, and they they've been, they're basically right with Miami as far as passing defense in the league in the bottom third or bottom quarter of the league in pass defense. And the, the difference is, is that while the dolphins have played three of the, the better quarterbacks in the, in the league, three of the better passing offenses in the league so far this season in the Bucks, the Raiders, and the Bills. Aside from playing Kyler Murray and the Arizona Cardinals, the, the Jacksonville Jaguars really haven't played anybody that should be destroying them through the air. Uh, they, Tyrod Taylor uh, put up numbers against them. Uh, Teddy Bridgewater put up numbers against him. Obviously, Joe Burrow put up numbers, and 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 Ryan Tannehill had a good game against him last week. And it, not necessarily did Ryan Tannehill like light the world on fire, but these are the these are the teams that they've played. These are the quarterbacks that the Jaguars have played, and their past defense is subpar. So this is an opportunity, albeit with a limited cast of characters. What do the Dolphins need to do on the other side of the ball when the Jaguars have it? Well, Trevor, I'm excited to see this because Trevor Lawrence, uh, I haven't watched him live yet. And, uh, you know, all the all the talk is, is even though he's thrown a bunch of interceptions, he's also made some eye-popping plays. So I'm excited to see what he looks like. And more so than that, I, I'm very anxious to see that if this Dolphins defense can respond, because I've been saying for weeks that this defense has been, has been, you know, pretty underwhelming and has been kind of been, it's been given a pass by both the national media and the local media and the fan base, because all the focus has been on how bad the offense is with Jacoby Brissett and this offensive line, but the defense has quietly been really bad and it all came to a head this past week against the Bucks, where they were just completely destroyed and the offense didn't even play bad. They lost that game and legitimately the defense was the reason why. So Ken, now that this defense has finally been called out and the onus is on them, 
can this defense finally respond and be the defense that we expected it to be, or at least close to it, against the Jacksonville offense that is not very good? Uh, yes, Trevor Lawrence is exciting. He is talented, but he also turns the ball over a ton. So it's a major opportunity for the Dolphins to force turnovers, which is what they've done best over the past year plus. Uh, so, you know, whether X plays or not, I don't know. If he does play, you got to like the odds of, of X getting a pick, even if he doesn't play. The, the bottom line is the Dolphins have too much talent on that side of the ball to not be able uh, to, to, to win this battle against the Jacksonville Jaguars offense. But the problem is they, they also need to stop the run because the Dolphins haven't been very good against the run this year, uh, which is basically a continuance of last year. Uh, right now, we're 20th in the league in opponents rushing yards per attempt letting up four and a half or 4.4 yards per attempt. And meanwhile, the Jaguars are, I think, second in the league in rushing yards per attempt. So you've got to find a way to slow down James Robinson. Also, you've got to uh, keep your eye on Trevor Lawrence. You can't let him get out in the open. I don't think Trevor, look, Trevor Lawrence has the ability to pick up some yards on the ground and make a, a play here or there, but he's not exactly Josh Allen. Uh, he's not... Uh, Lamar Jackson certainly he's not Kyler Murray he's not he's not though that level of athlete but he is capable so you got to at least account for it but it really starts with stopping the run Raquan Davis made his return to the Dolphins defense last week and it was really kind of he kind of got pushed around uh, so you, you're really hoping that you're going to see a better performance out of him Christian Wilkins needs to step up but really the linebackers Alandon Roberts and uh, Jerome Baker, uh, they got to play better. Andrew Van v Van Ginkle has been a ghost. I I, I haven't seen him the last couple of weeks. Uh, he he kind of had a, a big game against the Raiders a few weeks ago, and we thought, all right, Van Ginkle is getting back into the swing of things. There were a lot of expectations for Van Ginkle, but much like just about everybody to a man on this Dolphins defense this season, Andrew Van Ginkle has been pretty disappointing. So this is an opportunity for everybody on this defense and really this whole team. What this week is about is about pride. It is about if, if this team had any designs on even being in the hunt at some point this season, even being considered one of the playoff contenders, which you have to believe they felt. And, and for damn sure, everybody, I mean, the national media bought in, the local media bought in, all of us as Dolph fans, even the most negative of us, had to at least feel like this team could be in the hunt for a playoff spot. This was, the, we talked about it all off season. This is the first year in, it's the first time in years. It's been three, four years. The first time since Ryan Tannehill was our quarterback that we actually entered into the season with designs on making the playoffs. So we had to feel like, you know, this was a year that we'd be in contention. And right now we look like one of the worst teams in the league. So much so that you actually have several experts picking the Jacksonville Jaguars to break their 20 game losing streak against the Miami Dolphins. So we're going to get into everybody's one hot take. And we're going to get our predictions, even, even a prediction from our missing co-host here, because Josh has even uh, been so gracious enough to, bad voice and all, record a video prediction. So you'll get to hear that in just a little bit. But first, got to do a little bit of manscaping. So I was, I was thinking back to, uh, you know, you know, my teenage years. And I was thinking about, you know, when was the first time that I, I first made my, I made my first foray into manscaping and look, you, there comes a point in every guy's life at, at some point, in another one, one, at some point in time, you're going to look down and you're going to say, it's kind of a jungle down there. And, and I got to do something about this. So, you know, you grab what you got, and you and the tools too, and you and you do what you can do to to make it as clean there. But you got to be really careful because you don't want to make an accident. And and the you know you got to avoid those really sensitive areas because sure enough, the first time you do, you're bound to slip up. You're bound to make a mistake. And if you're anything like me, 
You screwed up and now you're freaking out. You're grabbing the tissue paper, the toilet paper, just like you would put on your face. You're dabbing things on here. You're dabbing things down there the same way. And you're hoping, oh man, I hope that that cleans up. I hope that's not going to leave a mark. I hope it's not going to leave a scar. Well, that is why you got to get Manscaped. And that's why you got to get the Lawn Mower 4.0 because their fourth generation trimmer features a cutting edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents just like that thanks to their skin safe technology. You can get the Performance Package 4.0. It's key for a great grooming and hygiene routine to make sure the boys downstairs are smooth like Tom Brady in the fourth quarter. And don't we all know that all too well? So go to manscaped.com, use the dolphins, uh, use the promo code dolphins talk, get 20% off plus free shipping. It's three and out the window with all other trimmers. Now go tame that wildcat offense. So I did a, you know, I did a little bit of improving there and I did a little man's I know some of the fans here that have been uh, watching the show and, and listening to the, to the podcast, whether you're watching live on YouTube or, or just listening on your, your favorite pod catcher has been, they've been calling, Hey, we need Aaron to do more of the manscaped ads. I don't know that you need any more than that after these last two shows, but there you go. I did it. A couple of manscaped reads. So it's time to get those one hot takes. What do you? What do the fans think? What do what? What's going to happen uh, on Sunday? We got. Uh, we put out the call for the one hot takes. Let me let me get these up here. Hold on, I'm I'm bad at doing this on the fly, but I'm going to get this. Hold on, where is it? Here we go. All right, so we got a few. We put out the call a little bit late, but uh, we got some responses. Mike from Dolphins Talk says, with all the wide receivers hurt. Mac Hollins has 50 yards receiving and one TD. Is Mac Hollins our go-to receiver now? Is he our most reliable receiver? I mean, Jalen Waddle hasn't exactly been reliable. Uh, Mac Hollins, at least you feel like he's going to catch the ball. So I don't know. Maybe he is. Uh, so I like that one. Uh, Dustin Barnett says Dolphins, and in parentheses, Tua, finally gets Gasicki going. He has two receptions over 30 yards, each with a couple of scores. So a big game for Mike Kosicki. My fantasy team would love it. Finns are getting over 30 points a game. That's really two hot takes, but I'll allow it because it's a you know a lighter volume on the hot takes today. Uh, Keed, uh, Creed Bratton says, Dolphins lose and no changes are made. Also, everyone is reminded that Philly has our first. Uh, oh, no. Uh, Steve Lamb says Waddle scores two touchdowns. Lee Feldman, if Tua doesn't excel, he's gone by next season. I don't know how hot of a take that is. That's a pretty lukewarm take. I think everybody kind of feels that coming. Uh, Ryan at Ryan Cash says Javon Holland first interception. Uh, Mark Corey says Dolphins get spanked. And can't hang with Jags O. Ooh, you can't hang with the Jags O. You just really, I mean, do, do they have relegation in the National Football League? Because I don't know what else to do if you get if you get spanked by the Jaguars. Yeah, you gotta get relegated. You gotta get relegated. Maybe we should just forfeit our next week's game as a penalty. Uh crispy audio says six plays of 20 plus yards. Three between Tua and Waddle, one for a TD. I love it. Phil Piccolo says X with two picks. And Jacob at bond underscore out on bond says Tua rushes for 40 yards. I hope he slides or has the presence of mind to get out of bounds. Uh, Josh also uh, wanted me to know or, uh, and wanted you to know, the people to know, that his one hot take is that Jalen Waddle will rush for a touchdown in this game. My hot take is that Tua comes in and the Miami Dolphins are going to score 40 points on Sunday. You want a hot take? Nobody's picking that. You might say the Dolphins can score 30. Nobody's picking the Dolphins to score 40. 
I'm picking the Dolphins to score 40 points in this game. Will it be enough? I'll tell you in a second. First, we're going to get Josh's prediction. So enjoy this uh, video that Josh uh, sent in with his uh, scratchy, phlegmy voice and all. So enjoy it. What's up, Miami Dolphin fans? Josh here. Um, just wanted to make a quick video for you since I can't be on the show live. As you can probably tell, my voice is still a little bit uh, out of commission here as I recover from this cold that, that took me out <laughs> pretty bad. Um, but I wanted to just pop on and give you my thoughts on the game this weekend. It's a pretty big one. Two is going to be back at the helm, and hopefully he can help the Dolphins at least start the process of riding the ship. I don't think there is a single result that we will see on Sunday that could possibly be counted as riding the ship completely because riding the ship completely is going to be a weeks long process. For me, as far as I'm concerned with this Miami Dolphins team, it's, it's, it would be a great thing to do to go and get a big win overseas and then to come back and beat Atlanta. But it's until this team really starts to string some good performances together, it's going to take that before I think we've quote unquote righted the ship. And <laughs> frankly, at this point, I'm I'm not holding my breath. And it's not just because I can't; it's because I don't. I, I'm just, you know, and they've I've, I try to be positive most of the time, but I think they've kind of um, broken me a little bit here. But anyway, um, I do think the Dolphins are going to go into London and and get a big win this Sunday against the Jaguars. I don't think it's going to be terribly pretty, although I think the offense will take another step forward with, with Tua back at the helm. So I'm going to pick the Dolphins to get a nice win. Let's call it 25-16 in favor of the Dolphins, and the Dolphins will come home with a, with a dub from the UK and then come back home and take on the Atlanta Falcons. But first, the Jaguars. Let's go to London. Let's get that dub, fellas. Go Dolphins! So there you have it. Josh likes the Dolphins to win ugly. Uh, you could kind of tell. I, I, I know he had the scratchiness in his voice, but he got a little choked up there for a second when he said, they've kind of broken me. They've kind of broken me a little bit. Uh, and And I feel it. And I feel, and if we lose this game, I, we're broken. <laughs> there's, there, there's no coming back from it. If you lose this one, uh, they, we are all going to be broken as Dolphins fans. Um, I, I'm, I'm a little bit torn. Look, obviously, I, my hot take was that the Dolphins are going to score 40 points. So obviously, uh, you know, I got, I got to pick the Dolphins to win this game. But look, I, I almost picked the Jaguars to win this game because, look, in my heart of hearts. And in my brain, I believe that the Dolphins are going to win this game. I think the Dolphins are the better team. I think the Dolphins are better than their record. I think the offensive line, while still not good at all by any stretch, I think made an incremental step forward uh, last week. The offense in general took an incremental step forward last week. And I just feel like the defense is at a breaking point where it has to play better and really just the opponent. Uh, where, where you're playing the Jaguars, that this is, it's now or never as far as getting this thing moving back on the right track. I have to believe, I I, I can't believe that this team is this bad uh, considering what I thought about this team coming into the season. They're certainly not as good as I thought they would be coming into the season, but I don't think they're as bad as they've been the last few weeks. But part of me wants to say, well, then show me. But I can't, if I'm using that same logic, how do I pick the Jacksonville Jaguars who haven't won a game in their last 20? So I'm picking the Dolphins to get things right across the pond. I think the defense is going to put some points on the board. I wouldn't be surprised if we get a special team score. I think the Dolphins play as close to a complete football game as they've played all season long, and they get a big victory, and they win it in convincing fashion. I'm picking the Miami Dolphins to win this game 41 to 20. That said, I wouldn't be surprised if we lose. Uh, but that is my official prediction. Remember, when the Dolphins score 40 this Sunday, nobody was picking them to score 40 except for this guy. 
And when they get shut out, nobody was picking them to score 40 but this guy. So remember that. So for Josh, who will hopefully be back with us celebrating a much-needed Miami Dolphins victory on Monday after the victory on Sunday. Did I say that right? The show will be on Monday. The game will be on Sunday. But we won't record until Monday night. But we'll be live on YouTube, and you'll listen to it whenever you listen to it after we record it. Hopefully, Josh will be back. Hopefully, we'll be celebrating a victory. If we're not, we're going to be calling for blood. We're going to be calling for everybody to get fired. We're going to be calling for Stephen Ross to sell the team, although we've kind of been doing that for a while, or at least some of us have. Regardless, on behalf of Josh and all of us at DolphinsTalk.com, I'm Aaron the Brain saying, Go Dolphins!